What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and this past week was yet another strange one for Apple, which seems to be the usual around this time of the year. But this week, beta testers got the release of iOS 15.2 Beta 3, along with the usual updates to watchOS, tvOS, macOS, and HomePod OS. And for those of you who are not beta testing, you guys got iOS 15.1.1 this week, but only if you have an iPhone 12 or iPhone 13. If not, then this week was just another uneventful week just like last week and you're still sitting on iOS 15.1 as the latest version. Although Apple Watch Series 7 users with cellular, so if you have the cellular plus Wi-Fi Apple Watch Series 7, you guys did get watchOS 8.1.1 this week as well to fix a charging issue. So pretty strange that we have a lot of different versions for different products, but it always gets weird around this time of the year. But anyways, in this video, we're going to be talking about iOS 15.1.1 along with iOS 15.2 beta 3 and some of the additional features included with that version. And like usual, we will also talk about the bugs, the performance, the battery life, and when to expect the final release of iOS 15.2. All right, so let's start off with iOS 15.2 beta 3 and some additional new features and changes found in the software that I did not cover in my initial what's new video and the first one is actually a feature that has been requested and you know mentioned several times for the past literally like two or three years and that is that we can now search inside of playlists in Apple Music so if you go to one of our playlists here or any created playlist that you have from somebody else you can now swipe down and you can search inside of that playlist. So this is something we've been waiting on for many years and I'm surprised it took Apple this long. So if we search for something, let me just search for like Drake, for example. So not only can we search, but when we press play or shuffle, it will actually play or shuffle those specific songs by Drake. And we can scroll down here and see all the songs that are either by Drake or featuring Drake. And if I put another artist in there, you can see that it will search right away. And again, you can play or shuffle just based off of that artist. Or if you just want to see what songs you have from that artist in that playlist, or if you're looking for a playlist to add to your library and you wonder what songs they have from certain artists, you can now do that. So this is an awesome feature added to Apple Music in 15.2. Now we also have some changes to the iCloud private relay feature. So if we go into our iCloud settings here and then go to private relay, and you can see right here, we have IP address location and the private relay kill switch right there. Neither one of those are new, but what is new once you have this enabled is if you go into your cellular or your Wi-Fi settings. So if I go into my Wi-Fi settings right here, you will see that the verbiage has been changed. So it no longer says iCloud private relay. It now says limit IP address tracking. And then underneath we have some new verbiage as well. So it says limit IP address tracking by hiding your IP address from known trackers in Mail and Safari. When this is turned off, iCloud Private Relay will also be turned off for this network. Another change in iOS 15.2 is actually on the iPad. So technically iPad OS 15.2. So a new feature is inside of settings. If we go to the general section right here and then to gestures, you can see that we now have this right here for corner gestures, allow finger to swipe from corner. So before you would have to have an Apple pencil to you know swipe up from the left side or the right side to take a screenshot or whatever you want to do. But now with iOS 15.2, you'll be able to use those gestures with simply your fingers. You can configure it right here. You can see you could have it either for a quick note or a screenshot. So maybe I could set one for each. So I'll do quick note in the right right here. So now if I swipe up from the bottom left-hand corner here, you will see it can take a screenshot just like so. So a lot easier to take the screenshot right there. And then if I swipe up from the right, you can see it creates a little quick note right there. So this is extremely handy, especially if you do not have an Apple Pencil. Also in iOS 15.2, I talked about this in a previous video, but we have the option to do the hide my email feature straight from the mail application now. And I'm not sure if this is new or not, but now on the two section right there, it just simply says, hide my email. It doesn't show the email address or the contact anymore. It just says hide my email. And when you tap on that, you can see it pulls up that email address that you have right there, the fake email or the, you know, the email that you have that you want to hide. So that's interesting here in iOS 15.2 as well. Also earlier this week, we did get a new AirPods 3 and AirPods Pro firmware update. So a new update for both of them. And this fixed a few things. So two of the really annoying bugs I had, really the only two annoying bugs I had with the AirPods were resolved this week as well. So this does not have to do with iOS 15.2, but it does have to do with the firmware on your AirPods 3 or AirPods Pro. So it fixed the Find My 
application altogether with the proximity search and things like that. And then also the left behind alert. So a lot of people, especially on 15.2 for whatever reason, had issues where they got left behind alerts when you had your AirPods with you. So even if you didn't leave your AirPods behind, you would get the alerts like you actually did leave them behind. So that has been resolved now with the latest AirPods firmware updates. And I did also make a full video on this AirPods update. If you missed it, it will be linked up in the cards and down in the description below. I went over more details in that video as well. Now, one other thing I noticed in 15.2 beta three is that the scheduled summary UI, of course, we know it's different now. It has a new look here in iOS 15.2. But one of the big bugs in 15.2 beta one and two was that you could not clear your summaries very easily or they would just come back. Sometimes you have to clear each you know, each notification individually, because when you press that little clear button right there, it would not actually clear all of your notifications. But now I tested it, this is a screenshot, which is proof that it works. My notifications have not come back and I can clear my notification summary as expected now with this third beta. But not everything is fixed because as you can see, when I search for my photos application, I still am not getting that in the spotlight search. And it happens for multiple apps, even after a reboot, no matter what happens, I still have this issue with spotlight search. So. I'm still waiting on that to be fixed. It only got broken with 15.2 beta one and has not been fixed since then. So hopefully the spotlight search bug will be resolved pretty soon. Also, Wi-Fi seems a bit more spotty than iOS 15.1. Although the speeds I will say are now back to normal and being on par with previous versions. So it just seems to be an issue with the spottiness and just it drops randomly, whereas it does not drop at all on 15.1 or 15.1.1. And then of course we do have the music streaming battery drain bug. So this was mentioned in the release notes. We have a bug where streaming music could lead to battery drain. It's somewhat noticeable. It's not a big deal. I mean, you are on a beta, so you notice battery drain anyways. So, you know, it's a minor, you know, inconvenience. It's a minor thing that you're going to notice with battery life. It's not the end of the world. And I would expect that to be fixed by the time 15.2 rolls out to the public. And as far as battery life overall, the battery is still not on par with 15.1 or 15.1.1. And I think it may have something to do with the music streaming bug because I do stream music, you know, most of the day, you know, probably for five plus hours a day. And I use this phone to stream my music on when I'm at my desk. So, you know, it could have something to do with that or it just could be because it's a beta. So who knows, we should see, you know, better results probably once the RC rolls out. And then of course, once the final rolls out, it'll probably be about the same as 15.1 and 15.1.1 if I had to guess. Now, as far as performance goes, performance, you know, aside from those minor bugs I mentioned, things are fine. I mean, nothing really to complain about here with 15.2, it feels about the same as 15.1 to me. And that's really gonna be the case pretty much moving forward, I would imagine, because after you get past like the point one, you know, even maybe point two, that's when things start to get really similar in terms of the performance. You're really not gonna have too many issues aside from the bugs. Just raw performance is gonna be about the same. And the Geekbench scores will reflect that as well over the coming months. Now, as far as iOS 15.1.1, again, this was only released for the iPhone 12 and iPhone 13 models to fix a modem issue that would cause issues with phone calls. And many people even had issues where their phone calls would just constantly drop and say call failed. So that has been resolved here with 15.1.1. Nothing else, you know, is in this update though. You don't, you know, you're not expecting to see any new features or any new changes in this update. There's nothing changed with the performance or battery life, even after using it for a few days here on my 13 Pro. Really nothing different aside from that modem update on 15.1.1. And as far as iOS 15.1 goes, for those that are not on an iPhone 12 or 13, nothing has changed for me in the past week and there's really nothing to talk about here. I mean, I've been covering 15.1 in these follow-up videos for a while, so you've already heard my thoughts on this update. We'll discuss some of the common issues and bugs in the community poll section, which is coming up right now. So if we head over to my channel and go to the community tab right here, you will see that I did post a new poll asking the version you're on and how it's running for you. So for me, I'm on 15.1.1 and it's running great. You can see there that got 66% of the votes, 15% around 15.1 or 15.1.1 and it's not so great. 8% on 15.2 beta 3 and it's great. 3% on 15.2 beta 3 and it's not so great. 8% still on iOS 14. So 
Thank you to everybody who voted. And of course, thank you to everybody who commented as well. I always enjoy reading these. It helps me understand, you know, how the software is running for you guys. So let's take a look at some of these comments here. So Eric, my standard iPhone 13 will lag once in a while, but other than that, it's been just fine. Though before the 15.1.1 update, it wasn't lagging. So I think 15.2 will be way better. So I would agree, 15.2 will definitely fix a lot of issues in 15.1. 15.1.1 was again, just a modem update. That was it. We have more people petitioning to stay on iOS 14. Bozeman here said 15.1, but the phone lags sometimes when opening the control center slash notification center or when switching menus on the 10s max and yeah you can see here that seems to be a common issue on 15.1 for looks like some of the older devices not really older but you know not the 12 or the 13. the 12 pro has bad battery 81 percent and i still get nearly two days out of it on 15.1.1 so 81 percent I hope that's not your battery health because that's really bad <laughs> if you're not watching my you know you're not watching my battery tips videos if you have 81 percent on your 12 pro by now but anyway it's good to hear you are still getting good battery life on that william here updated his 12 pro to 15.1.1 and noticed a significant improvement to battery life so that's pretty interesting you really never know sometimes with these updates what that outcome will be 15.1.1 has been great on my 13 pro max i only have only had the device for four days and haven't had any call issues so it's probably because you only had it you know since that update came out waffle here is on 15.2 beta 3 on the iphone 11 and the 2018 ipad pro everything runs great and battery life is good but the bug from ios 13 where you can take a screenshot and you crop it slash draw on it and it doesn't save your edits is back so that's interesting i have not run across that yet but shout out to waffle Good member over there in the discord server jack here is having issues on 15.1 where he's not getting notifications for the majority of apps there seems to be no fix yeah i mean that seems to be an on and off bug for a while now for like the past year so not really sure what to tell you there because it sometimes happens to me as well but definitely not on the majority of apps it's usually only the messages application for me jonathan here is having issues with his notification center not letting him clear i guess notifications without respringing battery life has been consistent with 15.3 beta 2 so not sure if he, not sure how you're on 15.3 yet but i hope i think you mean 15.2 beta too but no major issues or nothing major just annoying because i have five summaries that come through a day so seems like some issues still going on with the notification center there so i asked you guys to tell me about the carplay issues because i don't have a carplay vehicle so thank you for telling me this Ela step so he says lots of issues with carplay sound goes all the way up after using carplay google maps does not update the ui etc and most importantly auto brightness stopped working for me and nothing helps so if you're having CarPlay, it seems like there are still issues here on 15.2 beta 3. So I would assume those will be resolved soon, but it seems like some people are still having issues, mainly to do with third-party applications. That's a couple of times now I've heard something related to Google Maps. I'm on 15.1.1, and for some reason, FaceTime still crashes for me when I share the screen. But after I call them back, it's fine. So yeah, that's going to be an issue with SharePlay. I mean, SharePlay is still pretty new, so you can't expect that to be perfect just yet. I'm sure bugs related to SharePlay and sharing your screen will be resolved completely in due time. On 15.2 beta 3, auto brightness is broken. Very annoying. HomePod mini still buggy too. Otherwise, all good. Yeah, I'm still having issues with the handoff to HomePod and the HomePod mini. That's been buggy ever since iOS 15.0. So not really, you know, too hyped for a fix to come soon because it probably will not regardless of how many times I report that. But yeah, auto brightness, I have heard some people talk about that as well. It's not an issue for me, but it does seem to be, you know, not just you. Some people are also having issues with auto brightness after updating. 15.1 one is okay except for the podcast application making podcast playlists is seriously broken so i've not tried to make a playlist in podcasts so that's interesting i'll look into that but yeah a lot of people are having issues with the podcast application still here on 15. here's a new one i'm currently on 15.1.1 and after this update i can see there is some lag when opening airpod pro bluetooth i button so when you click the i on the bluetooth settings to open up your settings for the airpods sometimes when watching youtube videos video sound plays but video screen blacks out playing new video makes everything okay so some issues with the youtube app and some lag when opening up the airpod you know menu right there in bluetooth so pretty interesting so thank you again to everybody who did leave a comment and vote in this poll i do appreciate it it really does help everybody out here on the channel all right so now what's next for apple so next week is going to be the week of the 22nd that is thanksgiving week i would expect apple to release something early in the week because of course they're not going to be working on thanksgiving day which is the 25th right here i would not expect anything the day before or the day after either so that leaves us with the 22nd and the 23rd i can see 
see Apple pushing out an iOS 15.2 beta 4. Now this could be the RC build since we do have a, a B at the end of the build number here on beta 3, but I'm thinking this will be a beta 4. So we should see that early next week. There is the possibility of it coming, you know, the next week on the week of the 29th, just because of Thanksgiving. But I think Apple could release that next week, either on the 22nd or the 23rd. And then as far as the final release for iOS 15.2, I think that will come on the week of December 6th right here. So maybe on December 6th or 7th or 8th, somewhere around that time. It really depends on if we get that RC next week or you know if that's beta 4 and then the RC the week after. So my guess is going to be the week of the 6th right now. But of course, as you guys know, things can change very quickly with Apple. So make sure you follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with everything Apple is doing. But anyways, guys, there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys enjoy these follow up updates that I do every single weekend here on the channel. I know I find them informative, you know, reading through you guys' comments. I hope you guys find them informative as well. But if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 15 coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank you.